Come on, can we give God praise for being faithful, for being good to us? You know, I know God is faithful, especially when I'm not. I know God's good and faithful to me, especially when I'm, I find myself in a difficult situation that I don't know how to get out of. I know he's a faithful God because it doesn't matter how far you've gone, doesn't matter how far you feel even in this moment, he's still faithful to complete the work he started in you. And today I believe is a day where many of us are gonna encounter that love of Jesus like we never have before. How many know he's a good and he's a faithful God? I'm so excited that you're here this morning. We're gonna receive a word from God today. Before we do, let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that it's, it's your faithfulness that brings us here. It's your faithfulness that has kept us. It's your faithfulness, Lord, that has healed us and set us free. God, it's only through your faithfulness and your love, God, that we can be here this morning to receive a word from you. So God, open our hearts. Fix all of our attention on you. No distractions in this room, God. We're fixed on you. We pray that in this moment, we would receive a word from you, not from me. God, I'm not up here to share my own opinion. No one's here interested in hearing that. We want to hear your word, and we want to hear what you have to say, God. Speak to us. Holy Spirit, have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. We all say amen and amen. Give your neighbor a high five on your way to your seat, and let them know I'm excited to see you today. Well, good morning, church. We are so glad you're here. Uh, we have a full house in the place. Give yourselves a round of applause. My name is Pastor Christian. I'm one of the pastors here at The Way. And I just have the honor and privilege of serving in such an amazing church with such amazing people. I don't treat this moment lightly, and I'm really honored to be up here. And Pastor Marco sends his love. He is right now in Safford, Arizona, speaking to our Arizona campus with Pastor Robin and Veronica. Can we give a big round of applause to our pastor? If you appreciate Pastor Marco and Lisa, let's show them some love. Thank you, Pastor Marco. We love you so much. Um, right now, um, getting ready to celebrate two years of marriage pretty soon. And I'm excited. Uh, actually, um, I've been married uh, one year, nine months, three weeks, and uh, about 12 hours. I came prepared this time. Last time I was a little off, but I got it this time. And I'm so excited to be here with you this morning. You know, we're going to continue a series. I believe today we're going to really receive encouragement, an encouraging word from God. And we're going to find out what the Bible teaches us about love. We've learned that love is an atmosphere for growth. That where the love of God is, growth happens. And it's a foolproof plan. That God's love guarantees that we will grow. When we operate, when we move, when we live within the love of God, we grow. We've also learned that love needs to be our highest goal and our highest priority. I know there's sometimes in our lives that can get tested, if you know what I mean. We feel like our love gets tested when we're driving down the freeway. Well, our love gets tested when they get our order wrong four times. Hallelujah. Our love gets tested when our spouse uh, won't listen. I'm not talking about my wife. My wife listen. It's sometimes, it's me. It's me. I'm not going to get in trouble here up on the pulpit. I'm not. You know what we're talking about when a family or friends tested, but when we make love our highest goal and our highest priority, we don't let anything conquer our love. Then, then we are the most like Christ when we're loving. Today we're going to answer some questions about what God's love accomplishes in our life. I want us to turn to a scripture. This is Ephesians chapter 3, verses 19 and 20. And this is where we're going to spend the majority of our time in today's word. It says, may you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to fully understand. Then you will be made complete. Someone say complete. With all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God 
who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. That's good news. There's times in my life when I can't even think of a way out. I can't think of what's next. I don't know what more God has for me. And maybe you've struggled to see three months from now or a year from now. Maybe you've struggled to see what great things God may have for you five years from now. But it doesn't matter where your thoughts are right now. I believe as soon as we tap into this love of God, what God is saying is, my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And I can accomplish infinitely more than you may ask or think. Someone say, get ready. God's getting ready to do something new. Today we're going to continue this series. We're going to talk about it. You know, the scripture shows me that knowing the love of Christ is one thing. But encountering the love of God is something else. How many know what I'm talking about? I remember when I was younger, I was about 10 years old. And this is my, the first loving encounter I remember experiencing with God. And I've known about God and I've gone to church as a little kid. But I remember being 10 years old and standing at the altar with my hands lifted. Just like what we've seen today. And I remember crying for a reason I didn't know and I couldn't explain why I was crying. I wasn't sad. I wasn't hurting. But I was encountering something that felt so real to me. In that moment, that was the love of God. And what the scripture is saying, it may be something we may not be fully able to understand or explain. But, but what the scripture is saying, may we experience that love. Even though we can't understand it fully. And I believe today, God is going to encounter you. With his love. And I believe you're going to experience the love of Jesus today. In a way you may not be able to explain. But it's going to be so real to you. How many want to experience and encounter the love of Jesus today like we never have? So let's jump in. God, what does God's love accomplish? Number one. God's love completes us. God's love completes us. You ever heard that saying? You complete me. Well, nothing in this world can quite do that the way that God's love can. Scripture says, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life. The assumption here is that without God's love, something is missing. The question is, what is missing? And the even more important question is, what are you trying to fill that missing void with? You know, a lot of times the, word, the world gives us these counterfeit loves to try and fill a missing void that only God's love can fill. We are not complete. We are not whole until we encounter the love of Jesus. Let's look at what that word complete means. According to the original text, the word complete means to be filled to the top so that there's nothing left to want. That's a good place to be. I wonder what's missing from our lives. Sometimes we think it's another adventure. or We think it's some material thing. But it's none of those things. It's the love of God. There are a lot of counterfeit loves out there. How do I remember back in the day, I mean no one watches DVDs anymore, but how many remember DVDs? Wow, that was a long time ago. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. But how many remembers bootleg DVDs? Oh, all of a sudden, you guys remember. DVDs like, yeah, I kind of remember. Bootleg, oh, okay, yeah, I remember those. I remember those. Remember buying bootleg DVDs? Forgive me, I'm confessing. You know, they got the super slim case. Doesn't even protect the CD. There's 15 movies on one DVD. You pop it in the DVD player. How many know you don't know what you're going to get? It's like an Easter egg. You put that DVD in, you, you're, playing, you're playing a gamble. You don't know if you're going to get the movie, uh, an, uh, an old, like, foreign version of the movie, or you don't know what you're going to get. And then you pop the DVD in, and it's just, a, it's just a terrible recording. You can't even hear the movie, hear the people talking in the theater more than you hear the movie. What? 
people walking back and forth, the same lady. And you could tell it's that same lady. Just get what you need and sit down. I could tell it's you. You got the bun all up in your hair. All I see is a little silhouette going back and forth the screen. You got it four times for four different drinks. Just get the, get the popcorn and sit down. I'm trying to watch my bootleg movie. I remember bootleg movies, bootleg shoes. We used to buy shoes. I don't know if you guys remember, but this is my time. I used to remember Fat Farms. Remember a shoe? There's like two people that remember that. It was a, basically the logo was the letter P on the shoe. I used to buy the ones with the backwards P on it, hoping kids wouldn't notice, but everyone did. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. We used to buy those bootleg things. And, you know, it's funny. We carry those same habits in our Christian walk. We settle for a bootleg love. We got a bootleg love in our relationship. We got a bootleg husband or a bootleg, I'm not a husband, we got a bootleg boyfriend or a bootleg girlfriend. Okay, it's this version of what God has for you, but not really. It's an artificial version. It's a counterfeit version of what God actually has in store for you. It doesn't accomplish the same thing. It's not God's intended plan for you. But the enemy is okay. The enemy is fine with you believing that you got a, a version of the real thing. The enemy is okay giving you a bootleg version of love. And we're looking for love in relationships. We're looking for completeness and wholeness and adventures. Some of us think that we need to relocate. Some of us think that maybe if I find a new relationship or if I trade in my spouse, maybe if I trade in my job, maybe if I trade in my church, I'll be complete or I'll be whole or that little missing place in my heart will be filled. And all the enemy wants to do is to get you to fill that with a bootleg version of what only God can give you. See, it's only God that can give you something that's whole and that's complete. It's only God that can provide something for you that can get you to the point that you don't have to look anywhere else. And I believe what God is saying in this moment right now is you've come to the right place. You don't have to look any further. I'm not going to trick you. I'm not going to get you a bootleg version. I'm not going to hustle you. I'm not going to give you something that's fake. What I have for you is the real thing. I got a real love for you. I got a real promise for you. And my my word does not return to me void. I got a real love for you. How many need a real love from God today? How many need the real thing today? It's time for us to go through our spiritual closets and get rid of all the bootleg stuff. Every counterfeit thing, everything we've been trying to fill our lives with that leaves us empty and wanting more, it's time for us to trade all of that in so that we can be made complete in the love of Jesus. Nothing will make you whole like the love of Jesus. We've tried. We've tried to. We've all tried this. We've all tried to fill the void with our lust with our addictions, with our self-loathing. In other words, we feel like we got to fix our, our self, fix our body. Maybe if I just get one more tattoo. Maybe if I, if, I just, if I just shoot up one more time. Maybe if I get high again. That's all I need right now. I just need to get high. Maybe I just need, I need to watch a little more porn. I just, I just need to dive in. Maybe if I sleep with someone else, then I'll feel, I'll feel whole. I'll feel complete. And no matter how many times you tell yourself that this will be the time, it ends up not being enough. And you end up needing and wanting more because those things cannot make you complete. It's only the love of Jesus that can make you complete. It's time we trade in all these things that we've been thinking can complete us. If you're in that place today, if you feel like you're incomplete, what you need is an, is an experience with Jesus, and that's here for you today. I got good news for you. God wants to give you the fullness of life. God wants you to be whole. God does not want you in lack. God does not want you empty. God does not want you dealing and trying to fix your own needs with the things of this world. God wants to be your source of joy, of peace, of life, of hope, of fulfillment, and completeness. And he's here right now. You've come to the right place. Colossians 2.9. 2, 9, and 10 says, 
For in Christ lives all the fullness of God. That means that nothing is missing. All of God's goodness, all of his provision, all of his power, all of his anointing, all of his favor, all of his blessings, everything that you need can be found in Christ. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body, so you also are complete through your union with Christ, who is ahead over every ruler and authority. This is important. This is especially important for those that think they have to trade something in. They have to change something. They have to, uh, they have to relocate or it's something in my life that I have to change. It's nothing, nothing in your life. It's in Jesus. And in and through Jesus, he can give you the life that you've been looking for. If you're feeling empty, come to Christ. You can't be full. You can't be complete. You can't have fullness of satisfaction in your life. You can't be in a position of needing nothing if you're not filled with Christ's love. It can't happen. The good news is in Luke 12, 32, God said, Jesus says, don't be afraid, little, fo little flock, for your father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Your father's pleased. What does that scripture mean? Take a look at that again. He's saying, don't be scared. Everything that you need, God wants to give that to you. The good news is this. God wants you to be whole. And he has it for you right now. And it's found in his love. So what does God's love accomplish in you? Completeness and wholeness. To the point that you don't have to go searching outside of the, in the world for something to fill you that only God's love can do. God wants that for you. He has that for you. He won't withhold it from you. And he's offering that to you today. How many believe that today? How many are receiving that today? You're receiving that love. So right now we're answering this question, what does God's love accomplish? We know that God's love completes us, that was number one. Number two is God's love empowers us with everything we need. Empowers us. Someone say empower. Looking at that verse again, verse 19, Ephesians 3.19, may you experience the love of Christ that is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power, someone say power, that comes from God. That word power translates to this. In its original Greek, te Greek text, this is what the word power means. To be filled with his presence, power, and provision of God in Christ. In other words, everything you need will be provided through the love of Christ. I love that. Everything in my life. Everything I've ever needed, everything I felt like I've ever lacked, can all be pro is all provided in one singular thing. It's the love of Jesus Christ. You know, I think sometimes we overcomplicate this walk with God. I mean, there's so much to God's love and his goodness. Yes, I believe that. But sometimes we overcomplicate it. And we fall in love with the creation. And we lose our love for the creator. We fall in love with the gifts and we lose our loves with the, our love for the gifter, the one who's given it to us. It's all centered around one thing, church. It's centered around this core element. It's the gospel. It's the love of Jesus Christ. And everything else is a byproduct of the love of Jesus. Your freedom, your breakthrough, your joy, your life is all a byproduct of the love of Jesus Christ. Your deliverance. Come on, somebody. Your, your sanity. Your freedom from addiction. All these things that we've been longing for. We've been trying to do 12 steps in the world. We try to 12 step our addiction away and what God is saying is everything you need is centered around this one thing the love of Jesus Christ it's all in this it's all in the love here are three ways we're empowered by God's love we're empowered with his presence remember this 
Someone say, I am a carrier of the presence of God. Never forget that wherever you go, your, the presence of God goes with you. Why is that? It's because you are filled with the love of God. And wherever God's love is, wherever his power is, wherever his presence is, there's freedom and there's liberty. Look at 1 Corinthians 3.16. It says, don't you realize, don't you know that all of you together are the temple of God and the spirit of God lives in you? I feel like this question is asked this way because we forget that we don't have to wait for someone, Superman, to come in and rescue a situation. Our Savior already came 2,000 years ago. He died and resurrected from the grave. And now you know what he's saying? And now I live within you. That means that wherever you go, the answer is there. Wherever you are, the solution just arrived. When you walk in a room, and it's not you, but Jesus just walked in because you walked in the room. His presence entered that facility. And I know that may be a dark place. Your home may be a struggling, chaotic place. Your marriage might be on the rocks. But just know, as soon as you enter with the love of Jesus Christ, the presence of God just entered a room. And wherever the presence of God is, the enemy and the spirits must obey. I walk in a room with authority, not because I'm so haughty and I'm so confident in my own gifts. I walk in the room with confidence because I know the love of Jesus just walked in that room. We walk these streets of San Bernardino and we see souls get saved. We're out in Pomona and Compton and Arizona and TJ and we're going more places with confidence. Why? Not because we got it in the bag, but because we got Jesus living within us. And when Jesus enters the room, the love enters the room and his freedom enters the room. You don't need a priest to come over with some holy water and a crucifix to come pray over your house. Come on, you don't need someone to come over and just dump oil all over your bed. This bed's sinful. Let me dump oil all over it. You don't need none of that. What you need is to carry the presence wherever you go. What you need is to step into the room with the love of Jesus. What you need to know is this, that God's love empowers me with his presence. That wherever I go, God's presence is there in that room. How many believe that today, that God's presence is wherever you go? Be filled with his love to fill your home with his presence. Be filled with his love to fill these streets with his presence. Be filled with his love to carry his presence. So God's love empowers us with everything that we need, empowers us with his presence. And what, what's another way we're empowered? Empowered, that's a funny one, empowered with his power. Empowered with his power. Come on, somebody. The scripture says, going back to Ephesians 3.19, it said, with the fullness of life and a power that comes from who? God. Okay. There's a power that only comes from God. And it's very distinctly different from a power you may see in the world. We associate power in this world with authority, money, uh, the ability to call the shots, the ability to be hard, to be strong. There's a lot of ways we associate power in this world. But what the scripture is saying is you can be made complete with the power that comes from God. And right now, the power that comes from God, we can see, is greater than the power we face in the world. You have not experienced true power until you encountered the love of God. God's love has the power to do what the world can't, to set the captive free. Have you ever felt like you've been trying so hard to be free from something and nothing you can do can get you free from that? No matter how hard you try, why is it? Because it's only the power of God that can set the captive free. So when I walk 
in the love of God, not only does that empower me with this power to be free, not only does it do that, but it empowers me with the power to set the captive free. This is good news for parents that are praying for your children to be saved. This is good news for a spouse who's here alone and you're praying for your spouse to be here in the church with you. This is good news for anyone who has a brother or sister that you know needs the Lord and need them to be set free. You're praying for them and you're believing for them and you're, and you're call, crying out to God. Well, God has empowered you with the same power that sets the captive free. It sets you free. It set others free and God can use you to help set others free and it all comes from being filled with the love of Jesus. Look at 1 John 4.18. It says, such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. I just heard a story this morning or the other day. As a member of the church was experiencing the hard time breathing and realized that he had COVID. In this moment, he began to struggle with his breath and, you know, maybe think nothing of it in that moment, but he began, his oxygen levels, he could feel like we're going lower and lower. So he checked himself in the hospital and sure enough, his oxygen levels were going lower and lower and lower. And this is all happening in moments. And at this time, he begins to cry out for help. So he calls his discipleship group leader, and his DG leader begins to talk him through it. You know, this man that has COVID, he begins to cry and break down, and he's full of fear in this moment and afraid. And I'm sure these thoughts are going through his mind. Am I going to die? Is this how it happens? Is this the end for me? And right then and there, his DG leader begins to speak to him. You know, one thing that happened in that moment of course, he was going to pray for him to be healed. But his DG leader recognized something. That we need, to, we need to expel the spirit of fear out of his life right now. You know, a lot of times we try to treat our symptoms. We try to treat symptoms with different things. But in that moment, it was only the love of God that was able to help him identify we're dealing with the spirit here. This spirit that wants to take you out. This spirit of fear that wants to destroy you and wants to send you all the way to your deathbed. So what do they do? He's in the hospital and his friend is on the phone and they begin to pray right over the phone. He says, we're going to cast this thing out right here over the phone. So they begin to pray. So right there in the hospital room, he's praying, he's crying, he's coughing up. And the nurses are like, what is going on? And they don't know, they maybe don't realize that he's getting set free. And it's the love of Jesus that is expelling, that casts out all fear. Perfect love casts out all fear. And in that moment, he said he began to feel his lungs open up. He began to get set free. And he started to breathe again. And his doctors looked at his oxygen levels. And instantly, they went right back up to 100%. And they said, you're good. You can go home. You're cold, totally done. You're healed. What can we learn from that? That love, love gives us the power to overcome every spirit that would come against you. Every demonic lie. And I don't matter, it doesn't matter if it's fear, an addiction. It doesn't matter if it's unforgiveness or a pain you're experiencing in your heart. Only the love of Jesus and through the love of Jesus, you can have the power to overcome every demonic spirit that is trying to take you out in life. How many believe that? Come on, we need to believe that for our lives, for our families, for our homes, and for our loved ones. That God gives us the power over sin and death. And the third way we're empowered is we're empowered with his provision. It's a good one here. I mean, they're all good, but this is good too. Ephesians 3.20, it says, Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more, someone say more, than we might ask or think. You know, it's not a good thing to try and limit God. In ways we try to limit God is we think what God can and cannot do. 
we sometimes try to answer for God. He can or cannot, maybe he can, maybe. And our doubts begin to speak louder than what God's promises are declaring. And in this scripture, we could stand on this. And if you've ever dealt with doubt, if you ever dealt with feeling doubt or confusion about what God can and will and promises to do, I want you to stand on this verse and make this a verse that you stand on. And, and know this, that God, it, through his mighty power at work within us, is able to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Don't ever limit what God can do. He can always do infinitely more than what you ask or think. And I believe he's willing to do that. In the love of God is more. God's love doesn't leave us in need or in lack. God always releases resources to those who love him. Why does God release resources to people that love him? It's because he can, you can be entrusted with the resources of God. This is why in my life, I've always, even as a teenager, I've always practiced a principle of being generous of being willing to give. And I'm not just talking about financially. I'm not just saying that. But even including financially. But also being willing to give my time. Being willing to give. When I feel like I don't have the energy. Be willing to give it. Because I'm not tapping into a resource or a well that's empty or that's dry. I'm not tapping into a limited resource. I'm not tapping into something that's going to run out at the end of the day. I'm not tapping into something that's going to leave me high and dry when I need him the most. I'm tapping into something that can accomplish infinitely more. There is no bottom to this well. There is not, there is not a limit to how much you can have of God. And what we need to recognize is you can have and do everything that God has called you to do. Just tap in to all that God has for you. He's not a dry resource. He can do infinitely more. How many believe that this morning? Last verse here. Philippians 4.19. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Some of us have money, but we're still empty and lacking. We have clothes and we have cars and we have things. And we still don't have enough. Some of us are imprisoned by our own desire to get more of things. But what God is saying is, I empower you by, the love, by my love to have provision for everything that you need. God supplies every one of our needs according to his riches, not according to ours. And his riches are great. His riches include spiritual things that you can't buy with money. His riches include peace. His riches include the ability to be able to sleep at night. They include being free from anxiety, being set free from depression, being free from anger, being able to smile with joy, being able to endure hardship with strength and endurance. His riches have much more than you could even think. It's more than you can buy with money. It's more than money and provision and those things are great and I know God is faithful to provide those but he has so much more for you. So much more and today, trust and believe that God has all of this for you. That his love is providing all these things for you. And he wants to provide for you. God wants to be the provider in your life. All we need to do is welcome the love of Jesus in our heart. Before we leave, and I want to ask that we don't leave in this moment. I just want to ask you guys to stand. Everyone stand in this room. I'm going to answer one more question. How do we start to walk in this love? How do I walk in this? Here's how. Here's ways that how we walk in his love. First thing we want to do, the first step, the first action we need to take is repent. Someone say repent. The word repent comes up over a hundred times in scripture. Several in the Old Testament and several in the New. Why does it come up so often? It's because there's a lot we need to repent for. 
We need to repent from our pride, from our self-righteousness, from being critical and judgmental towards others. We need to repent from our anger, from our lust, from being unforgiving, unforgiving, being self-centered or for slandering others. We need to repent for using people and manipulating people. We need to repent for lying, for our sexual morality, for our abusive words and our abusive actions, for our addictions, for our apathy. We need to repent for our hardness of heart. We need to repent for going through the motions. We need to repent for making this just a, a casual endeavor. We have to repent. That word repent means to change your mind. To change your mind. To have a repulsion of your past sins. I know you may not feel that right now, but with the power of the love of God, you can properly repent to truly repulse your past. It doesn't mean you're, you're being ashamed of, of your past. We can testify about what God has brought us out of, but you no longer have the same desire for your sin and your desire for God outweighs any desire you have in this world. That's true repentance. We need to repent. God says in Acts 2.38, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God. Another, another thing we need to do to be empowered with his love is to forgive everyone that hurt us. Forgive everyone that hurt us. Ephesians 4.32 says, instead be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another just as God through Christ has forgiven you you know everything that God had to forgive you from you know your history you know those things and believe me God didn't hesitate to forgive you and we know that God is willing to forgive you because he was willing to give his son up for you so what God is saying with that same love Forgive others. Forgive people. Forgive whoever it was that hurt you. Forgive your father for not being there. Forgive someone if they cheated on you, if they've abused you, if they've hurt you. Someone that has molested you. It's time today to be set free from the bondage of unforgiveness, to release it to God and to walk in the love of God like we never have before. You know that as long as you hang on to unforgiveness, the love of God cannot be released fully in your life. If we can't forgive others, God can't forgive us. It's time to let it go today. I wanna make a call. If you're ready to encounter and experience the love of God, if you feel like in your life there's been an emptiness or a lack, you need to be made complete. Maybe you've been searching in all sorts of things and you've been looking all over for this love to be filled in things that just can't do it. What God is saying is today is a day to repent, to turn back to me and to be forgiven and to forgive others. It's time for us to receive that. I want to ask you a question if you feel like that's you and you're ready to receive the love of Jesus like you never have and experience and encounter the radical love of God, I'm gonna count to three. And all I want you to do boldly, yes, in front of the people that are around you, I want you to raise your hand. Don't be ashamed. Don't let what they think keep your hand down. Put your hand up today when I count to three. One, if you're saying that's me, I need to receive the love of Jesus today. Two. Don't keep your hand down. Don't let anyone keep your hand down. Don't let the lies of the enemy keep your hand down. If that's you, I need the love of Jesus. One, two, three. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I see your hands. Good job. I see your hands. Good job. I see your hands. I see your hands. I see your hands. I see your hands back there. I see your hands over here. I see your hands back there. I see your hand. I see your hands back there. I see your hands up here. Back there, I see you. I see you. I see you. Good job. I see you guys. I see you. I want to ask you to do one more thing. If you're back there with your hand up, I want you to do one more thing. If you're up here right now, would you do me honors? 
do us the honors of being able to pray with you. I want you to make your way out of your seat. I want you to come up here in confidence and boldness and saying, I'm not going to stay where I am. I'm going to move forward in all that God has called me to do. If you're ready to receive the love of Jesus like never before, I want you to make your way forward. Come on, let's clap it up for them, church. You're saying, I'm ready to repent. I'm ready to forgive. If you have someone you need to forgive today, and you're saying, it's time for me to let it go, I want you to make your way forward. You're saying, I'm tired of holding on to this bondage and being in prison in my pain. I'm ready to forgive. Come forward today. Today's your day of freedom. Come on, church, this is awesome. Let's give God praise. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. They're still coming, church. We're going to need more altar workers. We're going to need a, another wave of altar workers up here. If you're a DG leader, make your way forward. We need your help praying. Now, the Bible says that the wages of our sin is death. Have you sinned? Have I sinned? Yes, we've all sinned. Bible, Bible makes it clear, everyone falls short of the glory of God, which means we all owe this penalty is death. What is death? Death is eternal separation from God. In other words, it's hell. Let me break it down even more simply. Because we've sinned, the way to pay for that sin is hell forever. That's the only payment. I can't just be a good person and make up for it. It's not good enough. Our, our good deeds are like filthy rags towards the Lord. And nothing good we can do can make up for even one sin we've committed. So where's the hope? That was the bad news. But the good news is that God loves you so much that he sent, he sent Jesus to die for you while you were yet sinners. That means in the middle of your sin, Jesus was willing to put his life on the cross and say, I'll pay for the price that they owe. So that now whoever puts their faith in Jesus can be saved and forgiven of their sin. You know what that means? It's like you had a life sentence without parole. You had the death sentence on you. And Jesus came in and said, I will pay that price as long as we can pardon him, as long as we can pardon her, as long as we can pardon you. You know what pardon means? That word pardon means to get rid of all the legal consequences that were on top of you. The consequence of eternal punishment and separation in hell could be wiped away from your record. How? How can that happen? Because Jesus paid the debt. So how do I receive that? By putting your faith in Jesus. By repenting of your sins and turning from him. Today may be the day. I want to ask you this question. If you were to die today, would you die with the penalty still over your head? Would you have to pay that price? Because you only have, you only have one lifetime to be able to make that decision. And we never know when our life is going to run out. Today could be our last day today. And we don't want today to be the day. Because after we die, we don't have a second chance. We have to make that decision here. If you're ready to make a decision to follow Jesus, to put your faith in him, to be forgiven of your sins, and to give your life completely to him, if that's you and you're not up here already, when I count to three, I want you to raise your hand and say, that's me. I want to be saved. I want to be forgiven of my sin. And want to know if I were to die today, I'd be in eternity with heaven and with God forever. When I count to three, one, two, three. Just raise your hand if that's you. If that's you. And if you're not up here already, if you're not up here already, praise God. Praise God. Come on, let's give God praise. Let's give God praise. God's good. If you raise your hand, I want you to come forward and we're going to pray with you. For everyone that's up here, everybody that came up here today, we're going to help you. We're going to disciple you. Your next step is to get baptized and to go through a class called Holy Warriors. This class, Holy Warriors, is going to help you to live a life for God, to be set apart. No longer do we just live life one foot in and one foot out. Let's jump all the way in. Let's throw ourselves in the arms of God and experience and encounter his love like never before. It's time to done. It, it, I think we're done playing church. I think we're ready to go all the way in for God. How many are ready? I know you are because you guys came up here today. I know you are. I know you are. What's your name? Was it? Hugo. Hugo. 
proud of you, Hugo. Hugo's up here today. He's ready. He's ready for a new change. He's ready for a new life. Let's pray today. I want you to bow your heads. Repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. I know I've sinned against you. But because you love me so much, you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross and raise from the dead to give me a new life. I believe. I believe in you. I receive a new heart. I receive love. I receive your spirit. I forgive everyone that's hurt me. I let it go. I don't hold on to it anymore. Just let it go right there. Just let it go. Just let it go. Whoever it is you need to forgive in this moment, just let it go. Whoever it is that hurts you, that abused you, just let it go. It's time to give it all up. Lay it at the feet of Jesus. Don't hold on to this anymore. Just let it go. Say, I forgive. And whoever it is, just say their name. Say, I forgive. And say their name. There's freedom in that. There's freedom in that. God, I receive your forgiveness in my life. Set me free from the bondage of bitterness and unforgiveness. I renounce it and I give it to you. From this moment forward, my life will never be the same. I belong to you because my faith is in Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. Church, can we give God praise right now? I got one more thing to say. Pastor Marco, he called me this morning and he said, I have a word for the church this Wednesday night. We're gonna begin, we're gonna continue our series in the end times. And we were asking this question, are we in a great falling away as a church? And is this a sign of the end times? He says, I have a word for the church and I need everyone there this Wednesday night. I want you to make it, make it happen. Be there this Wednesday. Invite friends or family. Let's be there to receive a word from God this Wednesday night. We love you, church. We love you. Thank you so much for coming today. If you need prayer, come forward. We would love to pray with you. We would love to stand in the gap with you. But remember this, if God is for you, there is no one who can come against you. God bless you, church. Have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday. God bless.